Did you guys yeah, already just, call the one? I guess so. Am I then? Do I make it a quorum or were we a quorum already? Uh, you do make it a quorum. Uh, we only need four, right? We have four. You had four. You could have done all this without me. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know. We didn't know what you wanted to talk about because I know you, you called the meeting and we, because we went in front of the selectmen, so we thought we were done for the year. I just felt bad because we didn't have one last month, Dale. <laughs> yeah. So it could be a quick meeting. Um, and, you know, maybe we can, you know, just talk about what we want to do for January. Uh, but just for those of you, I think Mary, Paul, were, were you on the, did you see the uh, select board, Susan and uh, Paul Clary? What do you mean, see it? When we when we went in front of them? No. No, I oh, guess I did I, not. I did not either, no. I, I didn't know yeah, about so, it. Yeah, all we, we kind of got no notice to, to do it. I think it was uh, Friday they told us you know, that they needed us. And when Tuesday. did you go before them? When was it, Paul? Uh, two weeks ago on a Tuesday night. Yeah. So uh, the seventh, I believe it was. Yeah. yeah, we got notified on that Friday. So I saw. I oh, I'm sorry. Luckily. It was um. The, it was November thirtieth. Yeah. 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 So I posted an agenda in case we had a quorum of attendees just right. in the forty-eight hour timeline that I had been notified, but it was um. It was a short notice turnaround. Yeah. yeah, so Mary and I were in person and Rob was um, online and I thought if some one other person showed up, we would have a quorum. So yeah. I, I did let them know that you had sent out a meeting agenda for it. Yeah. yeah. And similar to this meeting, um, if uh, Paul had not you know, texted me, I would have completely forgot about it. And so luckily he did text me a half hour before. Uh, but I, I How did that well. go? I think it went well. Um, I think what we did is we showed that over the next two years, uh, we have, a, I think it was 42 housing units that were look to go onto the, um, our, our inventory. Um, and we went through what all those were. You know, it was the uh, four from the, the harbor, the two from um, the, uh, the, the habitat, the 25 from uh, Stop and Shop. The I think it was, was it fourteen from from Pleasant Street. Really, yeah. Um, I think that kind of gets you you to the number. Uh, we also mentioned that there's some other ones that we're working on with DHCD, uh, which are like the lighthouse and the keepers, but I didn't include those in the totals. Um, so I, I said I felt that you know we won't know for sure until we get the uh, census at some point in 2022 you know, exactly what the denominator is, but I do feel that in the two year period, as long as these things that look likely to happen, happen, we should be fine with our 10%. Um, so it might be, as long as uh, stop and shop happens in 2022, we should be able to apply for safe Harbor because we'll have done enough units to, to do that. And then in 2023, we should get above uh, 10% and we should be okay. Um, the other point, though, I mentioned is that although we are showing 40 something units going to the inventory, yeah. it's actually only 16 oh, affordable housing uh, actual units. So kind of explaining that, yep, we are looking at the big A, you know, of what's going to get us, you know, through 40 B. But in reality, we're not creating 40 you know, units for people to live in. We're creating 16 units for people to live in. So that is something as they're doing all the zoning stuff that the select board needs to keep in mind um, and, and, and keep into to consideration. I don't know, Paul, if you have anything else to share from, from it or Mary was that was there as well. No, I, I thought it went very, very well. I, um, you know, I did remind them that we were there because of two reasons. One is we wanted to update them to let them know that we're really paying attention. Um, and two is it was a requirement from the selectmen that we report twice a year to them. So, uh, that worked out very well. I think they were really engaged. They had a lot of good questions for us. And um, I think they were kind of um, surprised or impressed at the level of detail that, you know, Rob is able to give them off the top of his head. And it goes to show them, you know, how, how deeply we are engaged. And I was glad Mary was there because, you know, there's, there's more to a committee than any one person. So uh, Mary was able to speak to some of the properties that um, the trust may be looking to buy. And uh, so that worked out really well because I had some questions about that. So I thought it was extremely well received. Yeah, a lot of good details. Yeah, I thought it was, um, they were very receptive. They had a lot of good questions. Um, and I, I think 
that'll help in the future when we try to get stuff, you know, through the town meeting and so forth. Yeah. And, and I, I would say some of that off the top of my head is reading Lauren's write up. So uh, if you have <laughs> for that, thank you, Lauren. You know, for, Happy to help. Uh, like great, great uh, uh, say there. Yeah, and that's that's a good point. We did talk about you know what we were. I was, I, we talked about okay, this is what we have in the next two years, and then what's going forward. And one of those things was yeah, we think there's land that should move to affordable housing trusts. You know, kind of saying we're still going to need to do onesie twosies every year, um, at, at as long as there's still growth in the number of units in in Cohasset. Otherwise, we'll be in the same situation nine years from now when the census is coming around and realizing, oh, we haven't done anything in the past 10 years. So um, kind of reiterating that we got to keep on doing stuff. You know, it's not, it's not one and done. Um, I, you, I, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna ask, did you include the units that, um, that George and Ted are yeah. doing? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're fairly confident that we'll get those at some point in 2022. I mean, they, it sounds like they have the contractual agreement all ready to go, and they're just waiting for some approvals on their side. And once that, right, that right. happens, they'll sign that contract. And what's nice yeah. about those is they should be, you know, counted immediately, you know, because it's their livable uh, places. Uh, right. We think that, you know, Stop and Shop will eventually, and I don't know when in 2022, but we'll get a, you know, a COI. And so then we'll get get those. Thank Pleasant, you. I think, is probably further down the road. Uh, that's probably more of a 2023. Uh, we put that out uh, as, as possible to get done. Um, the other thing I, I wanted to update the committee on is I did meet with the Affordable Housing Trust about the property across the street from the Catholic Church on Main Street, yeah, uh, where the developer, yeah, the developer was asked, w willing to do it. What they've agreed to do is basically, we got a quote from, uh, what's it, MCH, uh, to help him um, make it an affordable unit. And the the way they structured it is, is they would give him uh, certain amounts of money based on milestones to cover the consultant's costs. So uh, what's nice about that is he would have the contract with the consultant so the town doesn't have to get involved with it. But on, you know, like submitting the, this up to the state, you know, let's say I'm making the number up, let's say it's 30,000 total, it's somewhere around there, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, or 15,000, 15,000. They were working, Affordable Housing Trust was working with the lawyer, Cindy, that they have on the board. Uh, to write that up. I have to circle back to see where they stand on that. I don't know if he's been presented with it, but the basic concept is they're willing to pay for the expenses that it, he would incur to make it affordable. Um, but then once he does that, uh, three units will be considered. It's one real unit, but all three would count. Um, I think we estimated that to be you know, potentially a late 2022 addition to the, uh, uh, on there. He, does seem to be legitimately moving forward with it, um, but everything takes time. Um, uh, we also received a, uh, I'll just jump around the agenda here. The, the 808 Jerusalem, we did talk to them. You know, I think you saw that Susan uh, about like, do we need to start the big fundraiser? And it sounds like they kind of said, no, 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 not yet. You know, it's like, so we do, uh, they do want to do, you know, something potentially at the um, the Red Lion, but they th they felt that it was a little bit too soon to to, to do that. So th they'll let us Are know. You that the select board thinks it's too soon. No, no, no. Habitat. Um, Habitat. Uh, Habitat. Jill. Habitat. Jill. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Jill. Yeah. So I think we'll, you know, I've kind of put in the ear to Affordable Housing Trust and the board is like, we're going to need some help here, but until we have it, I got something to focus on. I don't right, want right. to go too too big on it. So once we have that. I was encouraged by the note because it made me feel like that Habitat was going to do some stuff. Take some initiative, right? Yeah, so I felt that was good. You know, so it allays some of the current concerns I expressed last uh, last meeting. That exactly. all right? They're, they're they're kind of in it with us. So as long as I I don't expect them to do everything, but I don't expect us to do everything either. So it's got to be right. kind of you know, got to be joint hand effort. Yeah. Um, I don't have the agenda in front of me. Well, I guess any questions on on those things so far? Could I just make it a, just a point of information? 
Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry, <clears throat> just before we leave the affordable housing trust topic, I just want to let you all know that my colleague Jennifer Oram has given her notice. She'll be departing the town. Um, she took a position in Hingham, actually. She's not going too far. But with that, there's going to be some transition in our department. But I'm going to be the primary staff person for the affordable housing trust from the town hall side. So I just wanted to make you aware. Um, I think that'll be good for us, too, in terms of coordination. Of course, Jen and I sit very close, but we yeah. are not actually in the same brain that feels like we are sometimes. So uh, that'll be just in terms of our, our coordination. Just I'll be your primary point person for that moving forward. Well, that's and, good to have you at the helm for that then. Yeah. yeah Since you're not Lauren, here. how's the, uh, the search for a replacement? Uh, we are moving as expeditiously as we can to get that uh, in the queue, um, you know, of course, in the holiday week, but we're hoping to get some responses and something out by January. So awesome. But we're working on it. Otherwise, yeah, you role, just do it all, right? You know, so it's yeah. Yeah, what's her role? Um, because she worked up with um, Tracy, right? The two of them upstairs, the town manager's office. She started in the town manager's office. And then a few years ago, there was some turnover in when they created a combined permits planning and inspections department. So she came down from upstairs. She took some of her duties from okay. upstairs down into planning and then also yep. took on zoning and support of the uh, building inspector. So her job is kind of an interesting conglomeration. So that's why we're doing some more restructuring. I think at this point, we're looking to hire someone. We're taking some of the things that shouldn't be in planning and placing them back elsewhere in the building. And then we're going to have some more support to go around for master plan implementation, affordable housing, harbor, things like that. So, I'm, you know, as sad as it is to lose Janet, she's a wonderful colleague. Um, I think this, there's going to be some interesting growth in the department. So I'll keep you all posted as that unfolds. So uh, looking at the agenda, we talked about 808. Talk, I don't know. Um, Lauren, is there anything new on Stop and Shop or is it just uh, continuing to slowly move forward? Continuing to uh, slowly move forward, though, they plan at the planning board meeting in January to wrap up um, and issue a decision for the planning board purpose. So that's one step of their puzzle that they need to continue on their way to um, issuing. And then I will ask for uh, an update from the building inspector about what their plan is. I know there had been a discussion about issuance of partial uh, certificates of occupancy. Um, so I will get an update for you and have that for our January meeting as to where that stands and what that might mean for the affordable housing units coming online. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah there's a, a, sorry, a meeting tomorrow with uh, Don Pia to go over the implementation of the sewer agreement. So I'll be I'll be there tomorrow morning. So, but like, and I, I am not guessing that this will. But let's say miraculously everything goes nicely in the planning board be shocked if it does but let's say it does um doesn't sewer take a while to dig and put in there like what's what what's the timing on this project realistically so, so sorry just just to let you know yes it does take a long time but they're planning a phased approach right now where they're going to do a temporary tie-in to a tight tank that exists there under a stop and shop mm -hmm. parcel so there will be a temporary plan while they construct the sewer infrastructure <laughs> okay it looks like, uh, you know, something like uh, they, uh, DEP put a limit to the number of units he could temporarily hook up to uh, septic that's already there. So that's what he's trying to do is do a temporary hookup to septic for, say, 16 units or something like that while sewer is being built. And then it gets, gets all gets converted to sewer. Yes. And... You know, maybe Paul Cleary, you have some view on this. I mean, is there any chance of this getting approved by the planning board or is this going to get kicked for months and months? Paul's yeah. half with us. Well, but... I, I, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, Hello? here. Yeah. So uh, it's a good question. <laughs> I've been watching uh, the planning board meetings. I have very little faith that this is going to, yeah. that anything's going to get approved. That's controversial, but that's just me. Well, in, in this particular case, um, you know, I, I think it I think it goes back a bit more to the developer and builder owner over there rather than uh, the planning board itself. Um, but it seems like, uh, yeah, they got their temporary situation. So I know that there was a few questions asked about, you know, if there is a limited amount of uh, units released, how is that going to affect the affordable housing units? That was one question that uh, Clark asked, like, you know, like, let's just say, uh, Paul may be able to speak to this. I'm not really sure. Uh, 
how Paul is affiliated with that uh, project, but um, maybe like if they only got approved for say 10 units for now, are two of those going to be affordable or, you know, what are they going to do and how are they going to do that? So I think we're waiting till the next meeting to find out how they plan to approach that. Yeah, I don't Wouldn't they have to you work know, from with a, the ratio that we require. Yeah. So, well, there's a couple of things that are going on is uh, one is, um, so the, to, to hook up to for septic to be hooked up um, to the building, the only approval he needs is the, the building inspector's approval uh, for that. And DEP is taking control of the, of the entire site um, for this entire project because of the issues he's had in the past. Um, I, I don't know that planning board has any decisions to make. Um, Lauren could probably address that as far as vacancy, I mean, uh, occupancy on those units. I know he has, um, there are five or six people that have put their name on a list for the affordable side of it uh, that I know. So, and I suspect the affordable would be the ones that would open up first is my guess because they're smaller units. Right, so I'll just add um, the planning board does have a statutory timeline that they need to make a decision in and that they are coming up at the end of that. So they will be coming to a conclusion on the 5th at their meeting. Um, there likely will be a list of conditions that have to be met um, but, you know, these are, you know, not unexpected. These have been things that the peer review has flagged for the town. So some of the items I believe the applicant plans to address in advance of that meeting, other things we are kind of anticipate will be a condition of a decision. Um, and then in terms of the uh, staggering of bringing online units, I know in a conversation with John Hallen in the past, when we talked about potential for uh, partial certificates of occupancy, he had indicated that that would be his preference to put in the affordable units first, the real affordable units first, and then phase in the development. So um, I'll ask for that sort of breakdown when I ask for uh, his updates that I can report back to you in January. That works for us because the sooner we get those affordable units in, the better. Yeah. 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 It, um, I think it behooves him too because um, DEP gave him a number of I don't know if it's a number of bedrooms or a number of units. Um, so there's a there's a limit. So if he if he opened up the, the the expensive ones first, he would limit what he could do. I, I remember that being part of the number. So okay, well, something for us just to keep an eye on. Um, yeah, 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 that'd be great. Yeah, I'm hoping next year at some point, but I'm not not expecting it soon next year. But uh, yeah, we thought it might be by the end of last year. <laughs> Like, I, I have learned to add at least one, if not two years, onto any date yeah. that anybody ever did. It's 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 like, oh, my goodness, I'm going to be gray, completely gray by the time this is done. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'll call you right back. Um, all right. Uh, then we've got Elm Street. Which one's that? 124 and 87 Elm Street. So that's George's four units we talked about. Oh, right. okay. Yeah, yeah, it's all set. Pleasant okay. Street still in the beginning stages, right? Yeah, that's so what's what's the status on Pleasant Street? I thought you thought that the contractor was putting it up for sale. I think he sold it, didn't he? I that... I don't know. I can't confirm that it was sold. I haven't yeah. heard of any um of filing for building permits yet. They, they have the planning board approval in place if they were to proceed with that property as planned, but I'm not sure what the new owner intends okay. to do at this point. Okay. okay. So the that's best just... case scenario is 2023, but the new owner could just say, eh, never mind. I don't like affordable housing. So the hell with you. But what's this? I don't know what else is on the agenda, but um, since we're downtown, I, the, the gas station, what's the story there? That was going to be condos. So we only get to count two, right? Uh, the applicant has yet to file. They've been looking into different options. I believe at this point they're planning condos over apartments, but I have yet to receive a filing. I am anticipating a filing with the planning board within the early half of 2022, probably January or February, if I had to take a guess. Yeah, I watched the planning board meeting um, where they presented their conceptual uh, plans, I guess of the building and all that stuff. So I was just curious if they seemed like they were talking about condos versus apartments. So, yeah. And it's 16. 
Is it still 16 units? I'm not sure where they ended off, but oh, um, okay. when I get that filing, I'll give you an update. Yeah, yeah, it's unfortunate Watch. though, because we, we can only count yeah. the two or whatever it's gonna be. Uh, yeah, but th th we'll need that for 2025 when it, they finally. And what's the timing that we're thinking about for the, the units on South Main across from the Catholic Church? I think he's trying to get that done this, you know, 2022. Um, I by think it'll probably be late 2020. Like a, by the end yeah, of the year summer. kind of thing. But I think, he, I mean, Lauren, correct me. I don't know if you know, he's been filing all his stuff and he's been engaging with the town. And, and I, as far as I know, he's, I know he's got approval from the zoning board and the zoning board of appeals for the first stop. I mean, he might have to go back for more, but I, I get the sense that he's really doing this. You know, it's not uh, just okay. a dream. Yes, that's correct. He's been engaging with the town and the different partners to get this project moving along. So I anticipate that it would be sooner than later. So it is moving as yes. rapidly as, as reasonably possible. Yeah, which I would say some point next year would be probably okay. reasonable given all the bottlenecks and stuff like that. Um, okay. The only other sites where you know, I mentioned briefly was I am meeting with Ted Carr, his contact at the HCD. Um, is retiring so they're giving us a new contact probably won't be able to meet with them until january to talk about how can we get these like other units like the historical society counted as affordable um as you recall the challenge there is they're already affordable so you can't go through the normal process because the normal process requires you to create affordable housing for, for like to make something that wasn't affordable affordable or build something new that was affordable it doesn't really work for something that's already affordable, turning it into affordable. So hmm. guys, I know that's a lot of confusing words, but uh, we'll, we'll talk to them and we'll eventually get them. Um, These are all very affordable priced. You know, so on the good side, we do have actual real affordable housing. Yeah. For people From the that. small A standpoint, it's good for the community. Yeah. And it's a, so it's something where people can live. Um, Town owned land review. I think that's you know, sitting with the affordable housing trust, you know, to decide what they want to do. Um, I missed their most recent meeting. I don't know if it was brought up at all. Um, I didn't see it on the agenda, so I don't think so. Uh, but that is something they need to think about for the May. It's May, right? The town meeting. Yes, it's May fourth. Yes. Okay. Oh, May the fourth be with you. <laughs> um, the is that it's in, is that it's in stone? Who are they gonna? A date's been set. It is, okay, so it is May 4th? Yeah, early this year. So I think we just need to make sure that we're on the trust and make sure that they put something on the uh, um, warrant so that I can go there and then we can argue and yell about it at the town meeting. Or it can just get passed unanimously and nobody cares, you know, that's what it oh, is. Sure, dream on. <laughs> it's really strange which ones, you know, they decide to fight and which ones they don't. Well, it's not strange, but it is interesting. Some things just sail through and it's like other things, but not, not so much. Yeah, uh, the, the one we just had was, like, was a record number of people because I, I think it had a lot to do with the baseball field, but. Yeah, uh, the lights. And which we accomplished. Uh, that's just my two cents. Town owned uh, affordable housing trust meeting. I think we gave the update there. Um, the consultant, uh, yeah, what's the deal the, with that? Well, that's the consultant that would be helping the uh, the individual uh, on Main Street, you know, those three units. Um, the consultant told us that they would not be able to help us with the oh, things okay. like that. That's why we're going to DHCD. That's just, you know, that's not, um, I forget the term, you know, the. LAU uh, local action units like those are not eligible for local action units. That's what she does. Um, this isn't some. There's no form for us to fill out or thing. It's more of like convincing people to do something for us. So that's why we're bringing Ted Carr in because apparently he's good at that type of stuff. Great. You're hopeful. Uh, 2022 planning. Um, I think you know that's what we probably should do in 2022. Um, maybe think about, you know, if everybody could come back with what um, we should try to accomplish, what are like two or three things. I feel like we're on the precipice of actually getting affordable housing, which, you know, will be uh, uh, amazing um, if we can actually get, to, I just want one. <laughs> I know, that's how I am. 
I'm pretty, I think we're all going to quit right after one. we get that first one and let, let, let the affordable housing trust deal with it. But yeah, it's like, I just want the one. Um, but yeah, I, I, besides, you know, pushing the, um, I think there's two things. One is obviously that we've got a lot of fires, you know, put kettles in the fire on whatever the, the thing is. We're going to need to continue to push on those. We have some things that will be a little bit more future. I guess really for the next meeting, the question is what else do we think we need to do or are there things more specific that we're going to need to do for the um, the ones that we're trying to push forward? Um, like, uh, you know, the, the fundraising for Jerusalem and stuff like that. That might be more than enough to keep us busy. But yeah, um, I, think I figure it's we'll make a big bite. Yep. Yes, uh, Lauren. So I just wanted to give the group an update and this might uh, have this group plug in a bit more in 2022. Um, some of you may or may not be familiar with the discussion about a comprehensive zoning rewrite. That was a uh, portion of the funding was, yes, <laughs> portion of the funding was allocated um, at special town meeting and we're sort of cobbling together some funds. We're planning to go out for bid uh, for request for qualifications process in the month of January. And we'll be sort of working through trying to contract with someone to come in and help us overhaul our zoning. It's an opportunity one to both clean up. Um, you know, it's been over 30 years since the last substantial rewrite. And typically as a best practice, it's recommended that you do it every five to 10 years. So we know we're severely out of date in a lot of things. Um, and then it's also an opportunity to sort of weave in new zoning concepts and different policy recommendations out of the master plan. A lot more community conversation to be had about a lot of these things. But one of the things um, that we're including in this proposal is that in addition to working with the planning board, select board and the zoning bylaw working group of the master plan um, that we, have this consultant, whoever they we settle with, um, really tap into some of the other existing committees based on like areas of expertise. So particularly about affordable housing, I think it's going to be an opportunity for this group to coordinate. Um, and you know, for example, one of the things that comes to mind is inclusionary zoning bylaw. That's something that we've uh, flagged in the past that needs some work. So that's just one example. Um, but just to let you know that that's coming down the pipeline, and that when the time, probably more towards the spring and summer. Um, we'll be looking to engage this group about some of the affordable housing pieces. So, and if you have any ideas that you want to sort of that come to your head about zoning that you might look to bring forward, um, yeah. you know, have, we'll, we'll be all yours. So. Is it, is it typically the zoning committee or the or zoning board or the planning board who brings forward zoning bylaws? So uh, it, there's a statutory responsibility for the planning board to take part in zoning bylaw changes. It's um, outlined in state law. But what you typically see happen in these channels is you'll have a group, for example, in our case, the zoning bylaw working group has been charged by the select board to begin right. a study, start analyzing this, and then they move forward recommending things to these other boards. And then it moves through the channels of you know, bringing forth by the planning board to town meeting process. So that's actually what happened with the two articles that were on the annual town meeting warrant. Right. But this year it stemmed in the master plan bubble and then worked its way through planning board review, select board advisory committee, the typical process. Yeah, I'm just, I guess what I'm getting at is wondering because it's been 30 years since we've had really significant review and change, why that's been so long. You know, it just seems like, you know, we've had, I mean, we've lived in town for like 16 years and there's been so much change. And I think back to the people who not think back, but I think about the people who've lived here for the last 30 years and the change that they've seen. A lot of the change though has been in the last decade or, or you know, even more recent. I mean, I'm, I don't know, I guess I'm, I'm kind of beefing a little bit, you know, that, that we, haven't done more sooner because sometimes it's kind of closing the barn door when the horse has already gotten out. Right, exactly. I think the thing is in general and all you know communities have this similar issue is that zoning change is, is actually really hard to do. It's a very labor intensive process of a lot of community engagement and particularly when you're looking to these big overhauls, you know, while a lot of it could be formatting, it's like the people, like if they don't understand what's going on in the weeds, it's like you've lost them at town meeting and then it just, you know, it becomes this whole process. So while we look towards doing this rewrite, we are going to, you know, consciously think about phasing it in pieces that are, you know, reasonable to be accommodated by the community, because some of the things that are going to be clean up, you know, it's like, they should be pretty non-controversial. Then there's other things that are policy decisions. And that's where you really need community consensus building. So yeah. we know that a lot of that sort of com community conversation is going to take longer than perhaps some of the sort of administrative tie-up pieces and 
clarification. So, you know, uh, it's it's a big uphill, but, you know, I think everyone's sort of recognizing that it hasn't been done in so long and we need to do something. Yeah, well, a, a number of years ago when we when we first started this committee, um, Clark had gone to town meeting and they had changed zoning laws um, that we had. They, they claimed a lot of it was just uh, language updates, you know, things like that, but there were some changes to it. And when I was pushing for the um, housing choice grants, uh, you had just started and they recommended changing some of our zoning laws, uh, the language in them to better fit um, the definitions or applications for getting grants. And um, you know, I remember recommending those to Clark to see if you could get those changed, but I don't know that anything's ever been changed. Not really substantially. And some of the grant criteria that like for those opportunities are like, you have to sort of reduce the permitting barriers to multifamily housing, which um, that becomes a policy perspective because right now multifamily is not allowed anywhere in town without some sort of board review, special permit process, whatever it is. If you okay. then take that away, allow it by right, you're then, you know, matching that grant criteria, but then you might upset the community because now you're just allowing that by right. If you have the, you know, if you meet the area requirements, then you can do that, you know? So that's the kind of thing where it's like, yeah. The, it becomes a policy decision, you know? Okay. Okay. Yeah. I knew there were a couple of goofy ones in there, but um, yeah, I mean, as far as affordable housing goes, I don't know if there's anything that, that we would want to change other than make it any, any, if it's three or more contiguous units put in affordable, you know right. what I mean? I, I, don't, I don't know. Or, I mean, even the, in, um, the accessory dwelling unit bylaw, there is a, some small tweaks to it in, I want to say 2019, but it could also use a lot more work. So that's another one that's sort of like a low hanging fruit one that I think we already have it there. We just need to modify it. But again, yeah, that yeah, sort yeah. of treads into like policy territory. So yeah, I, yeah. Uh, my job is to be Switzerland in these matters and just direct yeah. the channels. So yeah. um, the last yeah. town I was in, um, I was on the, zoning update advisor committee. And uh, we had a consultant, we worked for about uh, 18 months and then I moved here. So um, I wasn't there at the end, but we tried to have a, uh, what was considered for us a robust public involvement effort, but the whole thing got slammed at town meeting and people were just felt blindsided. So it's re there's really got to be a lot of not just meetings, but, you know, stuff in the Mariner, every, you know, every, you know, once a month after uh, the meetings and stuff, because I, they turned down a lot of things that were very progressive and have been really talked about. But the, you know, the, the, there was a NIMBY group that uh, came to town yeah. meeting and just turned it down. So, yeah. I mean, um, I, I hate to be a Debbie, yeah. a Debbie Downer, but there really needs to be some very strong, positive um, uh, and intrusive almost public involvement for it. Yeah. That's a great point, Mary. And that's been a, a topic of conversation in terms of making sure that people are educated, that we're having forums. And that it's not just when you get to the planning board public hearings, because by that point it's too late. You need yeah. to have constant engagement, education, um, you know, and, and different methods of getting to people. Because I think, you know, and I said this at the select board meeting the other day, it's, it, you know, the world we live in is different now, the way people communicate and not everyone is coming out to these evening meetings, even if you can watch them on Zoom, you have to have other ways and, you know, means of communicating with people. So that is a big portion of what we're looking for in this consultant. And we will also, as we work through this process of drafting zoning bylaw, we're going to have written comment periods. We're going to try to do our best to get as much public involvement because you, you really, you know, you hit it on the head. It, it's really, really crucial to the success of these kind of initiatives. And it, the last thing you want to see is this massive undertaking you know, drop dead on the floor of town meeting. Yeah. Well, and also um, I think stuff like uh, sending out, uh, you know, a flyer or, a, a in, you know, we did inserts in the paper and um, uh, for other, I've done it for other projects, but, but just having something that someone can hold in their hand that comes to their house, everybody gets one. It's not cheap, but it, someone can't at that point say, I didn't get, I didn't, 
hear about this because everybody got sent it either in the, you know, and sometimes you can do it in the water bill or something like that, but there's lots of, there's, there's gotta be multimedia kind of, uh, kind of. Yeah. Outreach. And like you said, people actually get their information through varying sources. So you kind of have to cover all the bases. A little bit of everything. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, I that's great the, feedback. Thank you. Yeah. But I think the challenge that you run into is you can spend a tremendous amount of time trying to educate the entire community. 3% of the community showed up on uh, the town meeting. So really only Matt, and I think that's the, the difference is you don't need to inform them. You need to engage people and get them to come to the meeting and vote for it. You know, it's like, because otherwise it's, you, you're gonna have a group of people who do, yeah, if, the, if there's stuff that they, that they don't like, they can organize very well. And as you saw, it took six, spe five speakers, man, man, actually four speakers to basically kill the Article 6. And I think there was a lot of people who weren't informed about it. They heard the tone of it and that, and, and then, it, then it was set and Article 6 was dead. Maybe it should be, maybe it shouldn't be, but it's really the people in the room that matter, not if you want to pass it, you know, and it's like, and there's not a lot of people that come to those meetings. I think even at a, even at a town meeting, what do we get? Like 600 people is a, is, is good. And that's like 6% of the, or of the, the community. Um, but I, yeah, I think from us, from what we're just thinking about affordable housing, it's the inclusionary zoning. It is something I think we should talk about because it is 10% the right number. Because as you say, like with this 16 units coming in, we're going to get two. That doesn't really feel like a lot, you know, and I do think, you know, in discussing this, we're seeing real challenges for the town because we don't have these affordable, real affordable units, not just the ones for for 40B. Um, I know, I, I think it's pretty public that, you know, Anchor and Sale is um, closing down and something new is is coming in there. But one of the challenges you hear is there's no workers. And the reason there's no workers is there's no public transportation to Cohasset. So you're not going to be bringing, nobody's driving to Cohasset for a 12 hour, $12 per hour job or $10 per hour job. So there are consequences of not having, you know, places where people who work here can live. Um, and so I think it's just something we need to think about. I mean, I, 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 I gladly put that up to 15%, which that would give us three units then out of the 16. But, you know. What's required to make that change? What do we have to do to make that change from 10% to 20%? Oh, we'd have to change the, the bylaw. So this is something many bylaw. years down. So that's yeah. just something that goes before town meeting. That's all it is? Wow. Right, so be that's all. <laughs> I know. I said that. I was wondering if you were going to laugh at that. That's all there is. That's it. Just go to town meeting. They pass it unanimously. Nobody, nobody challenges it. No, but this is something we could hours. ask them. We could ask them to include in their in, in the uh, the overall review. And yeah, maybe it gets passed. Maybe it does. What the? What's going on, Paul? It looks like you're burning down the, the house. Yeah. <laughs> Camp, camping well, yeah, in Cohasset. I didn't mean to distract you. Yeah, I'm just camping in Cohasset. Exactly. Just cleaning up some brush. That's all. Okay. Good. 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 As long as they, for a second there, it looked like Armageddon. You know, was it? Was, yeah. Was he's he's actually he, he's he's burning the warrant articles. <laughs> uh, so I think like I mean for feedback, I, I I mean I don't want us to get as a committee. I mean as personally, if you want to get involved in the zoning changes, by all means, please do so. Uh, but as a committee, I think we need to kind of focus on what impacts us. And it's really going to be inclusionary zoning. You know, it's like what's, you know, we should take a, a good look at that. See, are there changes, like are there areas that aren't included that we think should be included? Is the percentage number correct? You know, um, do we want to clarify things around, you know, th there was a whole bunch of, you know, discussion uh, with the harbor thing. Can it be someplace else? Maybe that's something we want clarified in the language up front so you don't have this confusion back and forth. So I think that's something we can put in our 2022 to, to work on. Besides that, then there's, there's going to be tons of other stuff. And just to set people's expectations, the very best case scenario is that phase one of two of this would be May of 2023 uh, You know, for, for any changes. Then at that point... It could get voted down. It could get, you know, indefinitely postponed. It could get sent back to committee, you know, and so it could, another six months to a year could easily 
be added on at that time. It could all get passed as well. Who, who knows? Uh, but there's nothing going to change in 2022 because of this. It's more of a 2023. And that's just the beginning stuff. I think the final stuff would be 2025. Is that right, Lauren? Or 24? Wow. Right. I that think long? in an ambitious timeline, it would be it would be the first phase would be 2023 and then the following would be a year later in annual town meeting 2024. But of course, I think part of this phasing is also going to take a look at what they suggest for timeline and scheduling, because it might be I mean, it might also be that we do a multi phase like we're going to address this topic this year and we make a plan for the next couple of town meeting cycles. So that's kind of going to be fleshed out with the, you know, getting the sense of the community and what they want. I, I don't, yeah, I have no idea how they're going to, there's going to be things, as you're saying, even one of the challenges you have is what's one person's definition is another person's policy change, you know, um, so it's, it's, it's going to be fun. Uh, again, it'll give me something to write on Facebook about, so I'm, I'm happy. It's not a lot, not, not a lot to, to do, so. All righty. Um, Administrative uh, member comments. Oh, I think I'm uh, good. I, uh, we just need to know um, if, if you want to stick with uh, even even number months next year for meetings, or what do you want to do? The people's thoughts. Should we should we kick it off in January and go odd? Or, you know, I'm fine. I don't as far as the 808 Jerusalem and any of the fundraising stuff, I don't. I think January 11th is premature for yeah. anything related. Even to number that. months. Do you think so, Paul? I mean, I think. Yeah, there's not much to talk about between now and January 11th. It's going right, right. to right change a lot. But I think once once it does ramp up, then we may need to meet. You know, at the very yeah. least, you know, every month rather than every other month. Fair enough, but I think our next meeting can be February, unless anyone else has thoughts. Cool. Um, any items not considered and anticipated in 48 hours in advance? Hey, can you? Can you hear what, me? What is, what is the, um, the deadline for getting articles on the warrant for May? Is it February? Yes, it will be February. Okay. For this May. Right, May 2022. Right, it'll okay. be this February. For any for any zoning, I don't have the exact date, but it'll be sometime in the month of February. Um, the warrant is going to close at some point in March to make, okay. um, you know, because they have to have the, the notice and the warrant go out. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, I really think we should elect a secretary because I've been very bad at it. Uh, so I have sent out no minutes, but uh, I will try to do that. Um, I don't know if the Zoom counts it because we're recording it as minutes. Do oh, we are we recording that? It doesn't. It doesn't work like that, unfortunately. No, it doesn't. Okay. Well, at least yeah, I can so. go back and really look at them. <laughs> That's good. Um, well, I can add that to the next agenda too. Yeah, let's let's, let's see if we can do that. Okay. Um, and but I, I will try to get minutes out for this one. Well, maybe if we have a language translator, you know, um, the software that. <laughs> takes a voice and prints it in English on a Word doc? <laughs> there are some people that, I was just on a Friends of Wampatak uh, meeting and they do they were talking about doing that, but uh, yeah. uh, you get some AI. I'm sure the town of Cohasset has high level AI that can com convert this recording to, um, to, to, to that. Um, <laughs> we should ask Carlos. Awesome. Any, any other business? I don't think so, so we're going to wait and meet in February. Is that correct? Are we going to? Yep. So do, do you want to plan for February 8th? That's the second Tuesday. That sounds good to me. Okay. Yeah, and since, yeah, you know, Lauren's going to be doing two jobs in January. So it's like, we got to, we got to give her a little bit of a break. Got her hands full. Thank you. Yeah. Going to be a busy January. That's for sure. Can so I February just ask 8th. if anybody wants to um, trade off the secretary and, and I've, somebody do minutes you know um on a rotating basis so that uh i mean i would i would be happy to do them but my internet is so bad i miss half the meetings sometimes but i'm thinking if everybody takes a month um you know you don't have to do it you know two or three times a year so yeah especially if we're meeting every other month you can put names in a half 
Mine is unstable too. It's gone out three times during this meeting. So this sounds like excuses. You know, I don't know. I, this <laughs> sounds, listen, our, our daughter's. You can log back in and look at the recording if you if, if you're, yeah, yeah. Yeah, second time. <laughs> you can always go to the recording. That's right. You don't have to. That's you don't right. have to. You don't have to publish it. Uh, you know, an hour after we're done. <laughs> it's all right, just we will solve annoying. that at the next meeting. Uh, we'll we'll yeah. make a motion and all that fun stuff. I just uh, had our, our daughter's uh, boyfriend who actually works for Facebook and AI, and I just had him try to review my computer to see if he could figure out why my Zoom cuts down, and we can't figure it out. So I don't know what to do, but it's hard to take minutes if you miss what somebody's saying. I found if I um, uh, don't do uh, video for myself, then it, I think it, it lasts better. So I've been trying that. Well, I, I hear the pandemic's going to be over by February, so it should be fine. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's like... I'm glad your crystal ball is working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, the spike's going to turn down in no time. Don't worry about it. It's, 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 we're going to just acquire it, done, you know, and it's, it should be fine. Uh, At least people start wearing masks, please. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a lot more in the, uh, in the community. It's like a lot more people are wearing them. Um. Well, happy holidays to everyone. Merry Christmas, yes. happy new year, all that fun stuff. Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. So I think. All in favor? Aye. 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 Susan, aye. Right. Uh, Merry and actually, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Lauren, can Merry I just grab you for one second? Absolutely. Sure. Thanks See for you next year. Thank you for the host. Right, so. Happy running, Rob. All right. Thanks. <laughs> I'll be yeah, out on Christmas Day in my Santa costume. Yeah, so yeah. It's, uh, All right. Stay yeah. safe, stay healthy, and have a great Christmas and a great holiday. Thanks, everyone. Bye, Thanks, guys. Lauren. Good luck with Jen.